Hello, my name is Rita Rosenbach, and I am the author of Bringing Up a Bilingual Child. I'm also the founder of this um, Facebook page, and my blog is multilingualparenting.com. Today I'm going to answer two questions which have been sent in to me, and also if there are any, any further questions, in the comments i will answer those too there was one that came in earlier about reading so i will that's one of them that i will pick up so today's first question is from jared jared lives in the us with his family jared himself is a cuban american and um, speaks of, uh, is fluent in spanish although it's not his native native language uh, his wife is Azerbaijani. Um, and she speaks Russian and English and they have uh, a small daughter five months old uh, who is learning Spanish and Russian f from them as well as of course English since they're growing up she's growing up in in the US um, so the situation is that uh, they are using one parent one language which means um, Jared is speaking Spanish and um, his wife actually yeah his wife speaks English and some Russian but the main thing here is that they they are lucky to have some grandparents who uh, who offer the Russian exposure as they take care of the daughter <clears throat> five to six days a week so there are three languages which is fanta fantastic um, Jared's question is about a Spanish exposure because he already is doing really well. He's already reading Spanish books, listening to Spanish podcasts, playing Cuban and Latin American music and nursery rhymes. And his father's side only speaks Spanish with their daughter. Fantastic. There are a lot of great language exposure there. And then um, uh, he asks, is there are there any further suggestions on how to maximize the exposure to Spanish? Well, there are, of course, there are other things to do, but just keep in mind, you are doing a really good job already. Um, yeah, Jared also mentions that he is aware that he has a non-native accent, uh, which he's okay with, and I'm happy to hear that, that you're saying that it is okay. Don't worry too much about it. Um, I, you'll be fine as long as you feel it's okay to speak Spanish with her, that's okay. And if I know other success stories for children learning a parent's a non-native language, I've heard many stories of, of not stories, uh, uh, real life situations where parents have spoken their non, a non-native language uh, with their, with the uh, children, especially if they're fluent with it, and the child has grown up uh, learning it. So that's all fine. Um, so the first thing is that it, you're doing great and you should continue doing that Jared speaking Spanish and make that a routine do not switch to to in English when you're speaking with her um, this is the most important thing um, I find when it comes to minority language that that you uh, that, that you get get used to always speaking or your daughter always gets used to hearing Spanish from you and she will naturally then also answer in Spanish. So the biggest threat, so to say, to, to a minority language is, is when parents readily switch to the, to the majority language um, because as soon as the child gets more exposure to the majority language and they quickly become very fluent in it, then it easily also happens that they would prefer that language at home. Uh, the best way to prevent that situation from arising where there's a question which language you should speak with a child is to always stay consistent in, in the use of your, your own language. So it's not, when you speak about consistency, it's, it's not so much about that stick to the rule, you must do this because it's one parent, one language. No, if there is a plenty of other exposure, it's fine with switching. It is more about the habit. If there is very little exposure to a particular language, the bigger the importance is for a consistent habit of using that language with the child. So, so that's, that's where it comes, comes from. 
Um, I know you don't ask about your Russian and, and your wife speaking English with um, with your, your daughter, but uh, that's maybe something you need to keep in mind as well. If uh, if she's speaking more English than Russian, um, there will come a time when your daughter goes to nursery and will not stay so much with, with her grandparents. So if that kind of falls as falls away that that exposure so she only gets very little um exposure in russian then it would be important for your wife to speak russian so she might consider consider um her options whether she she wants to speak english uh, with, with your daughter because it is highly likely that your daughter then would uh, once she gets more um, used to speaking english um also would like to switch to english with with uh, with her mom other ways of, of um, finding exposure. Uh, since you live in the US, it shouldn't be too difficult to find, for example, play groups in Spanish. Uh, so look for those in where you live. Maybe you <coughs> maybe you can uh, attend some of those over the weekend, or I don't know how your grandparents or how grandparents would feel about it. Maybe they could take her for for some time to a Spanish a Spanish playgroup. When she grows up, you could look for a dual dual language um, school where she would um, hone her Spanish alongside alongside her English. So those are really really good ways of uh, keeping this, this Spanish going. Um, so you're doing a really great great thing already. Uh, what you can also do is um, you can uh, introduce some monolingual toys. That's one of my favorite ways of, of introduce, keeping, uh, supporting a language for a small child. So dedicate dedicate some certain toys that they only speak Spanish. Um, uh, so it can be preferably a figure of some sort. It can be like a uh, like a hand puppet I've got here behind me, or, or a teddy bear, or, or something else. Um, children have a fantastic imagination, and they can easily un uh, kind of imagine that a toy can only speak a certain language. That way, you get one more, well, not person, one one more thing that uh, is monolingual in in uh, Spanish. You could also have Russian toys, so, so this this kind of supports the the multilingualism in in the home and and your child keeping the minority languages. So that was um, Jared's uh, question. Jared, don't know if you're you're on online. Uh, if if yes, just add some comments or add them later on. I'll, I'll check check under the video later on because there will be a recording of this this video as well. And my second question is from Gloria. And Gloria, um, who is German, uh, and her husband is French. They have a one-year-old son, and they are currently traveling, or oh, envy you so, uh, but they are planning to move to Germany for a while soon. Since their son was born, she has been speaking English, she's fluent in German and English, um, Gloria that is, and her husband is speaking mostly French. And she writes, however, we are not too strict about that so far. Together my husband and I mostly communicate in English, some French. Moving forward we are unsure on how to communicate with our son. And the main question here is, can I speak English and German with him or do I have to stick to one language? Is it okay if, when I focus on one language, that it's English, which is not my mother tongue? Is it okay to mix languages? Um, uh, some of the same questions as with Jared. It is generally okay to, to mix languages with a child. It's not the mixing itself, um, which, um, which could be like a threat to, to a child picking up a language. It is if there is to, uh, mixing uh, to an extent that the exposure to a certain language gets um, restricted, 
and and the the habit of using a language like I spoke, spoke just before um, answering Jared's question, um, then that is that may be uh, making it more difficult to main, maintain the language of, with, with a child. So it's perfectly fine, Gloria, that you speak um, English with with your daughter if that's what you feel and sorry with your son I, um if that's what you feel and if you if that feels fine then then that's fine and uh, and um as you are also also speaking english with your husband there is a you already use a lot of e english in in uh, in your family especially if you move to germany german will and you stay in Germany at least for for some considerable time. German will soon become your son's strongest language, and in that way, it's almost ideal that you would be speaking English with him at home, so so he can learn and maintain that language as well. Um, it probably would also it's actually it might might sound strange but it, it will probably also support um, your son learning French in the way that you wouldn't be bringing in the majority language German when you live in Germany you wouldn't be bringing that in into into the home but the, the home would be um, English and French zone only so briefly can you speak both languages with him yes yes you can um however you need to to keep in mind that um, the major, majority language of where you live will soon take over and become your your son's strongest strongest language and you want to support if you truly want him to learn french and english and german then my recommendation would be that you would uh, stick stick to english as long as it feels it feels right for you um, so to just to reiterate um, uh, throughout history parents have been mixing mixing languages and children have grown up learning the languages uh, there are very few half People that speak speak half this, half half that. That's very, very, very rare and unusual. That is the absolute exception. So, it, I, I don't think, as being bilingual persons, we mix our languages all the time, especially with other people who, we, or we do that with other people who we know understand both languages. We 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 don't do it with other monolinguals who wouldn't understand. The words that we, that we would put in in another language, so we stick to one language when we speak to speak to others, and this is a natural way for a bilingual person to speak, especially to another bilingual person. So that way, mixing is fine, and children are um, very good at keeping languages separate. It is important for them to also hear um, native native speakers if you want. Uh, them to get to or interact with native speakers to so they can um, hear a language in its oh what word should I use pure form there is no such thing as pure language but but you know what I mean um, so when I say of um, stick to one language it's always about the exposure time uh, the the and the habit the 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 getting used to speaking a certain language um, with a child and the child being used to answering you in a certain language because that is the crucial thing uh, when going forward and then when you want uh, when your son is growing up and and learning more than one language so I hope that answers your question Gloria if you do have any further questions just pop them in the in the comments i had the um, previous question which was about teaching literacy reading and writing in the minority language to a child and whether uh, 15 minutes a day would be enough 
I can't give you a, um, a categorical answer, yes or no to that. First of all, the most important thing with literacy, with reading and writing, is to follow your child's lead. Um, a child needs to show interest in uh, learning to read and, and showing interest in letters. There are ways you can encourage this by introducing them into, into place, such as uh, through puzzles or, or, or any other way that um, or building blocks with letters, um, making a go uh, making a, a game of saying this sound for a letter when you play with them. Um, this this encourages a, a child's um, um, wish to learn. Also, when you read, follow follow with the finger in the book, so the child makes the connection between the between the written and and the spoken uh, sounds. But most of all, most of all, do it when the child shows interest in it. And um, if if you start and notice the child is not interested, there's no point in, in telling the child to say, sit down, now we will learn to write. And then it's not the right time. Might not just be, it might be because the child is tired and is not, not ready to take anything in. But it might also generally be too early. Children are different. Some children learn, learn um, at a younger age and some others take longer. Any no, child with normal um, language development will read to, uh, learn to read read and write but of course I understand the minority language which is not taught at school it's different because the onus is on the parents to do that so is 15 minutes a day enough it's it's a it's um, it's a good it's a good start and um, and I think what you will find that if the child is interested, um, then you can do it for a bit longer. If the child is not interested, then you have to uh, take a step back and then maybe find other ways of, of uh, getting the child child interested and um, and uh, creating the the want for to understand and to use to to start writing um, by themselves don't i would say don't push it um child will show interest when they're ready and it will be so much easier to teach literacy when the child is ready to, to, to take it on so those were the questions that i had for today and uh, there will be an other a live q a in two weeks time uh not next week in two, two weeks time here on the facebook page page and um, if you have any any questions that you want to place to me please do so okay thank you and have a good day wherever you are in the world thanks bye